morning and welcome to Totality Town. It is Friday, March 29th. It's Good Friday. This morning marks 10 days and what, about three and a half hours from now until the start of the partial solar eclipse. That means today is the first time that the extended 10 day forecast will reach all the way to eclipse day. And this is where everybody kind of starts freaking out. So let's talk about what to do with weather forecasts as Eclipse Day approaches. As I start setting up for my full-scale practice test for today, I'm trying not to think about the weather forecast, but I already have friends telling me the forecast isn't necessarily all that favor, so what do you do? Well, here's how it works with weather forecasts in Eclipse Day. Stressing out is natural, it's normal, it's inevitable. Here's how you go about it without wrecking yourself too much. First, as you look at the 10 day forecast, obviously take it with a grain of salt. It's probably gonna change as you get closer to the day of the eclipse. Once you're about five days out, that's when you really need to start paying a bit more serious attention. Don't just look at one weather forecast, look at two or three that use different models for their forecasts. And when you're about five days out, and then especially three days out, those models should all start to converge and start seeing pretty much the same thing that's when you need to start really taking them seriously. Check your different locations and start making a decision about, okay, I knew I could go here or here or here, which one is it gonna be? But by about three days out, you're gonna know fairly reliably what is likely to happen on the day of the solar eclipse. Once you're three days and closer to the eclipse, any additional stressing out you do about the weather, well, that's on you. I'll try and have links in the show notes for some of the different types of weather forecast models that you can check with. At a certain point, unless you're committed to 100% flexibility on the day of the eclipse, you're going to have to make a choice and just stick to it. I'm part of the Dynamic Eclipse Broadcast Initiative Citizen Science Project, so unless there's a 100% chance of rain, I've already made my choice, and I'm relying on the old-fashioned forecasts, prayer and the mercy of God. I feel pretty good about that though, because I have a history of being clouded out for lunar eclipses and having great weather for solar eclipses. And lo and behold, last weekend, when there was the penumbra lunar eclipse, full cloud. What you can absolutely count on is the top two conversations between now and eclipse day being the weather and the traffic. So go ahead and start checking your weather forecasts. Early next week, I'm doing a video on what to do if you know that you're going to get clouded out and you can't travel to somewhere that is going to be clear for the total solar eclipse. All is not lost. There actually is some fun stuff that you can still look for. So please subscribe to the channel and hit notifications so you get that video when it's released. Thanks again for joining me. Look forward to seeing you next time here on Totality Town.